Today we're going to be talking about trees and specifically about simplifying and getting away from the idea of being too literal with the trees. I think it's hard to get out of that mode of when we see a photograph, we like the photograph, so we fall into the habit of just trying to copy it literally. And with trees that can be kind of disastrous because they are so complicated. They're almost like figures. You have to know a little bit of anatomy of a tree to understand it better then you can see things better and simplify and i'm not talking about painting an idealized tree every time but thinking of the photograph as just a place to start and creating a better designed less complicated more simple tree this painting here is not what i'm talking about it's a painting by ivan shishkin a 19th century russian painter and of course he didn't use photographs he would do drawings and small paintings outside then do him bigger in the studio, but he's a lot more literal. But even with his, he's simplified things, if you can believe it after looking at this. The values are fairly simple. He just keeps going and breaks it up into smaller shapes, which is, you know, detail, smaller detail. But the values in the greens and the foliage are, are fairly simple. There might be three or four values three or four different colors, but he just breaks it up. Smaller brush, smaller strokes. And as much as I like to look at his work, I really like to look at it because they're always well designed. You can always see the light real well. Great to look at, but I wanted to show that to contrast the Edgar Payne trees here. And here he's emphasizing more of the shape. The shape's very simplified and he's designed them enough so they don't all look the same. So they read as you know, solid trees. He's broken the values down to about two. Some of them, the ones in front, have a, maybe a couple of different values in the light, a couple of different values in the shadow. But as you start to go back, it becomes simpler and simpler. But during the block in, keep everything very shape oriented. And the more simple you can keep these dark and light shapes, like the dark shadow area here and the light area in there, the longer you can keep those values bigger and more simple, the easier it is to get the right value. It's when we start to break things up too quick, get too many small little darks and lights all over the tree early on that it's impossible to get the right value. Now from here, he could have gone on and added a bit more detail, but it works. You don't have to go any further and that's the key. There's something about the simplicity here that really makes it work. That really pulls you in. It looks like paint. Ivan's painting here. As much as I like it, it doesn't look like paint to me. I don't get excited about seeing brush strokes because there really aren't any. It's more about detail. But that looks like paint and that looks like fun to me, which, you know, if painting's not fun, why do it? So here's a tree by Edward Siego. He's a British painter in early, mid 20th century. And I, this is an outdoor and he had a very limited palette when he painted outdoors, mainly a yellow ochre, a indigo black. And then sometimes I think Indian red, I think mostly Indian red. But those three colors is what he's using here, of course, white. But the tree, what makes the tree jump out right away is, again, the overall shape. So establish that overall shape. And most of the time, you're going to establish that overall shape with the shadow because the tree is an upright plane. It's not a slanted or flat or sky, which sometimes you could start with the overall a lot lighter. Uh, here, overall, the trees are generally the dark value or it's the shadow value that really emphasizes the upright. So just starting with the one dark value, establish that shape. And you can use the negative shape of the sky to cut in until you really get the shape that looks more organic, more natural. Like he has a gaps on the left side of the tree, but on the right side, it's fuller. The highest point is not in the center of the tree, like right there to make it too round, the highest point is over here. Irregular, and really focus on that. I have a file on my computer of, of just tree paintings. There must be 15, 1800 tree paintings in there. Just every time I see one that I like, I just throw it in there. Then I have files of different artists of just their work, an individual artist's work. So probably double filed, but it really helps to see how other artists see things, how they simplify the shape. So another Edgar Payne, Again, you can see the darks establish, it's backlit, but it's the darks that establish that tree as an upright. And it's got two darks, 
Without the two different darks, it's got a lighter dark and a darker dark. Without that, it isn't quite three-dimensional. It would stand up with just one dark, but two darks in there give it some more shape and form, make it look three-dimensional. There's no sunlight. Well, I guess there's a few spots of sunlight, but he's designing it with the overall shape. Then using the sky holes, the negative shape, he comes in, I don't know how much he cut in, but all of this is just cut in and it shapes up the tree. It's not just a matter of showing sky behind the tree. Those sky holes really give that tree the shape that it has. So next one here is William Wendt. And William Wendt's trees are very, or were very angular. They're very rock-like, very solid heavy looking. He really simplifies his shapes and trees to just a simple dark and light. And you can see he keeps the edges very angular, not very many soft edges in there, mostly hard, uh, trying to show that contrast, but very simple, hardly any detail at all. It's just the big masses. And again, some negative painting of the sky into the trees up there, but you can see you don't have to do a lot to it. But he is real careful with this shape, how accurate this is to what was actually there. I don't know, I think this tree is back behind, so that one doesn't count. But you can see, very irregular shape. And you, that's what you want to be careful with, is that shape. And you can do that shape with the shadow. So block it all in, because the shadow color you've put down in value is always thinner than the lights. And you can always lay the lights on top, because they're thicker and they'll cover up the dark. This is another uh, William Wendt. Again, very angular, almost like it's chiseled out of stone, but very, you know, very heavy, solid looking mass. You don't want the trees to look wispy and wimpy. They have to be really solid and, and heavy looking. And again, it's the dark here that makes the shape work and the lights are added afterwards. But that negative of the background mountain cut in here and he puts them very strategically in there. They're not just randomly stuck in, but that really helps the shape. You want to be careful not to get too many, if any, sky holes in the light area because that's why it's light because the foliage is dense and you can't see through it. It's in the shadows where the foliage is not dense and you're looking through to the center of the tree and you can see, you know, back behind the tree and those are the sky holes. Again, very angular very shape oriented. And it's a matter of going back and forth to the background color, the tree color and value, and just going back and forth until you get the shape the way you want. Of course, you start off in the drawing stage with a, an outline or a shape or mass that you want, and then start breaking it up at different values. But uh, so have a shape in mind, but it, it's, it's that going back and forth between the background negative shape and the foreground or the, the positive shape of the tree. Same thing here. This is Guy Rose, California Impressionist, early 20th century. And it probably started out with just this big mass. Again, careful to get that irregular shape. Probably just filled in the whole thing and then use the negative shape of the sky to fill in. Maybe not, but you can see it's, it's that negative shape, those sky holes that make it read well. But more important than that, again, is that overall shape designing that shape. Don't be haphazard with that shape. Be very careful with a, a good solid organic shape that's gonna it's gonna work. And doing a lot of studies of trees with either just black and white or you know ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. Something very simple where you're not really worried about color. You can just work with the design, shape of the tree, simple dark and light values, and brush strokes, thick and thin paint. This is uh, William Lathrop, an American Impressionist, I think late 1800s, early 20th century. But he's got a lot of subtle broken color. He's using short, choppy brush strokes here. But value-wise, there's not many value changes. Basically just two in the foliage. What makes it work, again, is the shape. If we turn it to a black and white, yeah, you see some of the value change. Some of those smaller brush strokes are a lot lighter. But you can see the pattern of the slightly darker shadow, a little bit more darker shadow here, of course, the shadow in front. But you can see the dark and light pattern a lot better. And everything's real light in this painting. The shadows aren't real dark, but uh, still, still works really well. The color variation separates the trees, but there's not much value variation. Just a simple dark and light value changes, not too many of them. Well, again, what makes it jump out more is the irregular shape, designing and massing the shape in. Now, this is John Arnsby Brown. He's a British painter, landscape painter. 
what I like about this is he's using that silhouette, that dark, again, it's the dark value that makes the trees work. And all he has is that silhouette of carefully designed shape, not detailed or picky, than using the negative sky holes to really make it pop out. Spend some time too just looking at trees, going outside and seeing how the trees, um, kind of the silhouette of trees, how they look against a light sky and how varied the shape is and how the use of the sky hole can really change it up. So he's got basically one shape here, but the use of the sky holes makes it look like seven, eight, nine trees there. So you can see the massing together with simpler values is a lot more effective than way too many values and too much detail. And again, a lot more fun to paint that way than to worry about painting every, every detail. Now, speaking of every detail, this is a trees by Daniel Garber, and he does use a small brush. I don't know if he blocks things in first with bigger brushes, but a lot of dots and dashes here of the leaves. But he does simplify the shapes. In other words, there's pretty much just two values here, a dark and a light. So he's not doing a lot of detail in, sense of, in the sense of different values. He has a lot of detail in the sense that he's using a tiny brush. Now if we look at it black and white, it looks a lot more simple, other than that we can tell he used a tiny brush. But the values are fairly simple. A simple light on the foliage and a simple dark. And just two values in the background, two values in the front, big values. He's got some smaller ones in there to break it up. But uh, it's keeping that value change really simple. You can use a smaller brush, brush stroke and create more the sense of the small round leaves, but still keep it simple. I like to do this once in a while, but usually just in one area, not the whole painting like he's done here and like Ivan did in his uh, painting. Although I really like this painting. I like all his work. I just don't want to necessarily paint that way, but I do like to look at it. So always look at simplification. And again, that was uh, um, Daniel Garber. This is Carl Oscar Borg, a California painter. And you can see the difference. Big brush strokes, big simple shapes, as opposed to the tiny brush strokes. Both are very effective. What I also like about this, before I get back to Carl Oscar Borg, is how blue and how light he gets the background. And I imagine he pushed that quite a bit. And the emphasis of how light these shadows are and how dark these shadows are compared to each other. Even the dark shadows up front aren't real dark. I mean, you can go a lot darker if you want to really make things pop out. But he doesn't need to because he's he has good contrast between the darks in the background. Now we'll get to Borg. And you contrast that with the simplicity here. This painting is so much, it's so easy to look at. You know, you can just read it right away. Now he could have added more detail in the trees, maybe some in the foreground, but he doesn't have to. You can tell it's probably late evening the shadow is coming across here, sunlight in here, big shadow shapes in the background and on the clouds. It just reads real well. Again, those sky holes are what make, what finish the shape, but it's that overall design of the big shapes. Usually, again, blocked in with the darker value, not the light. It's the dark that makes things work. Now looking at a few photographs and what we can do with these. I cropped this just to zoom in on this bigger cottonwood here. But when I look at this tree right here, I want to right away establish the two values, or the one value, that's going to give it its basic shape. And that's the dark. Now I decided to change it from a green to autumn tree more of a yellow orange. So that's the dark. Most of the time I will fill the dark in in the whole tree. I left a little bit of where the lights are going to be. I don't always, you don't have to do that if it's more easier to think about to just block it all in dark. Uh, do that. I left a couple of the bigger sky holes and then came back with the light. See, I'm not enamored with the color of the photograph. I can change it now if I want. Everything is pretty green in here, so I've changed it slightly. But again, careful with that design of the lights. The darks, I'm just filling in. I'm just trying to mass in the big silhouette dark 
shape that makes the tree stand up. It's the darks that make the tree stand up against the flat plane, slanted plane, and so on. And then when I lay in the lights, I'm more careful than the darks. The dark, I'm careful with the big mass to get the overall shape. But now I'm, I'm doing a more delicate shape of how the light falls on the tree and wraps around the form. And it doesn't necessarily have to look like the photograph. And mine really doesn't. I'm pushing the value, kind of like William went, he really pushes that value change. You can see with the sharp edges, definite dark and light, he's really pushing the idea of where the light's coming from, where the shadows are, really emphasizing that. And the more you can do that, the easier or, or the better your tree will read. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Now, after that, I want to add maybe two values in the light. So I've decided this is the half tone, and I can go a value lighter. And both of those values, the light and the half tone, are in the light area. So they're both going to be light. There are not much hard edges between those two. But same thing in the shadow, I've added a darker shadow. So now I have two shadows. A lighter overall shadow that I block it in with and then the darker accents that, again, give the shadow areas a bit more three dimensions, a three-dimensional look, a little more atmosphere. With one value, the shadows are flat. Two values, they work a little bit better. And then lastly, sky holes. And you don't want to overdo the sky holes. I could probably have some small branches showing through some of those sky holes. But all that goes to simplifying the tree a lot more than the photograph. The photograph is using those little dots and dashes to show the tree. I'm using large, simple masses to show a more simplified version of that tree. And the next one here is some aspens in uh, Sheridan, Wyoming. And here again, it's summer. I'm going to vary the greens a little bit because I can. Words, we're not stuck to the photograph. So I'm going to keep the same values I see, but I'm going to have these shrubbery or smaller trees different from these aspens and then maybe a tree or two here just a little bit different i'm still going to make them all green just not all the same green in the photograph but i want to establish in this case generally you start with the darks but here the sun is behind me and uh, it's hitting the trees head on so i i don't want to start with darks here because there aren't that many darks the darks are very small. So I'm going to start with lights. And I got a muted yellow green here, stronger, brighter yellow green. These two colors are the same, this one and that one. They're the same color. I just muted this one with a little bit of red. Obviously, it's a computer. I didn't do anything to it, but pick a color. But that was my thought process. This one's a bit more muted. That's very strong. But they're both, they're all light, and then the pine trees are a bit more blue-green. That gives me my shape, even though I'm using light this time instead of dark, because the, it's you know, probably 90% light and the darks are kind of small. But it's that shape that's real important. And I simplified it quite a bit from what's there. I think I created a little bit better shapes by making them simpler and making sure they're more natural-looking. They don't get too symmetrical looking. Then I can add the darks. And here I'm, you're adding the dark right on top of the light, which means they're going to sink into the shadow, uh, light area a little bit, which is good so they don't become too sharp edged, keeping them simple. And then lastly, I can add another value within the light, maybe another value in the dark. But when the darks are this small, I don't have to add much value change in the dark, just one simple dark. But the lights are really big, so I'm adding some a little bit of color change, maybe a little bit of value change in the lights, but not much. Really keep it simple. And then lastly, some sky holes to give the shape a bit more variation. Give one more. It was also in Wyoming. Again, it's uh, backlit, meaning the sun is in front of us. The sun's way over here somewhere. Let me get to a red, way over here somewhere to the side, but it's also in front. So the trees are going to be mostly dark. So here I would establish the dark first to get the shape right. Just using the dark, you really, you can see how it really sets up the shape. 
sets up the light too. It puts the light in front. It's not behind me anymore because I'm starting with the darks. But really use that dark value. And always remember when you use that dark value to draw or, or block in the tree, not draw it. It's not your darkest dark. Your darkest darks are always real small. Now I also simplified the trees in the background, made them a lot bluer green and grayer. And then even behind those trees a lot bluer. You don't see that that much in the uh, photograph. See a little bit of change in value and, and color, but not enough. So I push it a bit more to there. And then adding the lights, knowing the sun, you know, the lights coming this way. So I want to have that lighter, warmer value follow the form. And it can be a lot more delicate, although thick paint, it has to stand out because you're painting on top of wet paint thick paint so it stands out but it's really going to show the form and it brings the tree from going to a flat value to suddenly having a lot of shape and form even on the background again a lot more muted a little cooler but showing the form there the trees up front here don't have any light but uh, using the sky holes to cut in and also using that dark to fix the shape. In other words, I've simplified the shape a lot more here. I've gotten rid of those little dots and dashes of sky holes coming in there and just made it more simple. That reads a lot better than having way too many little lights and darks in there. And then lastly, I added a little bit of warmth in the shadow here in front because the light is filtering through the trees. I mean, the shadow's cool dark and cool, but a little bit of warmth in there bouncing around. Not so much in the middle ground and background trees. They're just a bit too far away, but the foreground shadows usually have a bit more warmth in them, even though they're cool. They're warmer compared to the other, other shadows. So keep it very simple. It's that initial overall silhouetted shape that's most important. And then separating the darks and lights into simple shapes and masses, thinking more about the organic shape than just trying to copy the photograph, then using the sky holes to uh, shape up the trees even more.